Boom. That's the sound you heard by the hundreds after the Browns got their first victory <laughs> from all the victory fridges around town. Locks dropped off and mayhem ensued. I'm sure. The Browns win the Super Bowl. But uh, since since we, they did get the win here, we're going to give them the nod and give them the leadoff spot, and we're going to talk about some Browns. Uh, first and foremost, you gotta, we got to talk about the man who made it all happen. We Baker give, Mayfield, let's go. Give Baker Mayfield some love here. Uh, me and Jay Wayne were most pretty much Baker guys. I, I oh, mean, I'm a Baker guy. I've stamped it, planted a flag, or whatever you want to call it. We had a couple battles on the show with Big Co, who's none of us are necessarily quarterback guys, and it's not something we spend a ton of time talking about on the show and, and breaking down when we do rookie breakdowns. But we definitely loved Baker Mayfield, and Big Co was. Not necessarily a huge fan, more of a Lamar camp, camp Lamar, which that was a house divided in a lot of uh, circles. Sure. I don't know that ne Big Co is necessarily against Baker Mayfield. No. He was really just pulling for Lamar over Baker and in really, a fantasy And really all of that came down to when we were talking about rookies and rookie draft, really where those conversations came in. But Casey's right. There was definitely some you know heated battles on the podcast here over those two guys and of course, as soon as that game was over, I was texting these two guys about, you know, how I, although I still really believe that if Lamar Jackson was able to get starts and play a game in the NFL, he's going to it's going to make. Yeah, that's an if because Flacco's playing well, but Flacco's elite again. Right. Well, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about we'll talk about Lamar later because he, he doesn't earn. He hasn't earned any talk right now because he's on the bench. But sure. Baker, I'll Baker, give you I'll give you the, the do real quick of what you were saying on, on Lamar. We get it. When he gets on the field, there's a good chance because of his rushing ability that there is fantasy point potential is very high. And that was the crux of your argument the That's whole time. That's all I said. It, but it does come down to being able to play the position to stay on the field sure. to continue to be valuable at that position. Which and, and immediately you see Baker steps onto the field. What I, There was a, a tweet. Somebody put it up, uh, put the little replay up. The second pass in a row where he gets on the field, completed the pass, gets back on the field, takes another snap, completes another pass, and I think it might have been Higgins, just threw his hands up like they scored a touch, like gave the touchdown signal, but it was for two completions in a row. Like, yeah. I, I, think it, I think it was Warren Sharp said this offense is so thirsty, and he showed that, that the, def the, offense, that the uh, wide receiver threw his hands up yeah. in excitement that they completed two passes in a row. Said, and oh, not, shit, we're moving the ball. Right, exactly. <laughs> and not, not, I'm not going to take, take one shot at Tyrod here about whether or not he's a good quarterback because I, I like Tyrod as – I've I've measured good quarterbacks by winning NFL games, and Tyrod has done that. Right. But there's no doubt, there's no way you can say that when Baker Mayfield came in there, it wasn't a shot in the arm, it wasn't a kick in the butt on that yeah. whole offense. And when he it, it it was his poise and his confidence, and it it you know it was just the the aggressiveness with the with the football and throwing it in tight windows and throwing it to Jarvis Landry in bunches and Pepper and Callaway. You know, it right. was just amazing, and obviously the tide turned really quick. The momentum started building in that stadium, and you could uh, feel the energy. Sure, you and could. You could feel it through the TV. It the, was amazing. I think. I think everybody watching, except for Jets fans, were pulling for the Browns to win that game. The announcers were just calling for Mayfield. It was just a very strange scenario where, as you know, everybody basically wanted Baker Mayfield to play. Um, Joe but, Buck and, and right. Troy Aikman said his name a million and times, it, it, like he was playing. Tyrod did what. Hugh Jackson thought Tyrod was going to do for the rest of the season and kept him in those first two games and without with a kicker they're right. two and zero oh or one and oh oh one and oh 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 one or however you, whatever it is definitely could have won those two games if they had a kicker and that's what Tyrod does is not turn the ball over right. and keeps you in it to win the game and Hugh and Jackson's with, fighting for his life he's he's wants to be the coach of this team and he saw that as his best opportunity to continue to have this job and be able to we drafted this guy number one in Baker Mayfield and be able to slowly maybe work him in maybe when you're out of the chase necessarily, but the season's not really over and you can get him some live game action. Just happened well, so to people, be a lot quicker. As soon as you see this, though, as soon as you see Baker doing this, you got the instant reaction sure. of, well, how come you didn't play him already? Because he obviously has to look good in practice. But you, you didn't Well, get and everybody's big deal is that 
you know, you didn't give him the run enough run with the ones or no any one. run, any, any run. run with the ones. And you saw him come out in the preseason and play well with some ones here. There was still some ones on the field in the preseason when he was playing with them. But then you saw um, him and you Tyrod saw him, came off. He injured his wrist in the third right. game of that preseason. Yeah. And which is like the big like basically almost a regular season game as far as preseason goes. And Baker came in and you saw Baker be a little tight, be a little rattled and right. struggled a, a little bit. And, and that's to be expected right um but, but for the most part tyrod looked excellent in the preseason tyrod looked great and he looked pretty good through the first two games right what, i guess what i was starting to say there what was crazy is at the beginning of that game it just whatever the browns were doing it just seemed like they just were the browns wanted tyrod to or right. wanted tyrod off the field and baker on the field like the 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 blitz and the pressures coming from new york were, were coming in hot and heavy tyrod didn't have a ton of time when you watch the all 22 footage it seems like they're running maybe even some longer developing routes and not giving him these quick throws they didn't run the ball for the first eight plays yeah with it, carlos hyde who ended up being the player of the goddamn game the like game. Was, the game you got started. a great offensive line what you did all off season in the preseason was run the ball smash it you went right down the field in every preseason game that you came out there and you handed the ball y'all boys went right down the field <laughs> And you didn't do any of that in this game. There was some blitzes coming, and then for whatever reason, when Baker comes in, all of a sudden the blitzes are the ball came out quick on those first couple of Baker uh, passes, but the blitzes started to slow up a little bit, as if Bowles kind of backed off just a hair. Like every time they run a three four, every time there was five guys coming off the edge with Tyrod, right. and all of a sudden there's still some guys coming. I don't know if the offensive line they they huddled up and said, "Hey, this is what they're doing," and started picking it up. But it did seem that the blitz kind of went decreased a little and that they they kind of figured it out so it's just it was just a strange sequence of events to baker coming in there and then yeah like you guys alluded to like you could just feel the energy when he got in the game of just how the tide was turning immediately upon first completion absolutely uh and so not to take anything away from from what baker did but i think tyrod is getting crushed right now and Hugh's getting crushed right now but they were she was doing what he thought was right for this team to try to get them on track moving forward it's not like Hugh Jackson was coaching the Patriots and <laughs> ran these boys into the ground they haven't been good in decades right yeah. like yeah well Tyrod was literally getting crushed I mean right and, and Baker admitted that in in his post-game interview where he was talking about the Jets were throwing some weird fronts at us and some stunts and it's like they were either blitzing five or they were dropping a a, a a defensive end and bringing a safety like screen right. got him on a third down well, safety yeah, he, blitz. Well, that, he would be the slot corner, but Adams was coming in and, and getting him on blitzes. They Just, they had exotic, very very exotic blitz schedules to start that game, and a lot of trick, like you said, and, a lot a lot of showing pressure, dropping out, and then bringing a bringing you well, know heavy pressure from a the one zone side. Blitz, right. yeah. Just like you see offenses start the game with scripts, the defense of the the Jets defense started that game with scripts. Yeah, and they came at you hot and heavy with from all different. directions directions and it it was in it was an, an ugly game offensively for both sides of the ball to get started and just brown's got a good defense but the jets have a decent defense and those and their playmakers were making plays right and it was really really nasty defense to get started from the jets and like casey said maybe the offensive line maybe the 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 uh, Browns kind of huddled up a little bit and was like, okay, if they've came from here, they came from there. Let's watch this. Let's watch that. But the, I think most of it was the blitzing from the Jets, a little bit of disrespect for Tyrod's passing. Mm -hmm. And then when he Baker, was holding Baker, on to it a little too long, well, as well. they were, I mean, he well, wasn't helping himself out with that. Casey aspect. did a lot of film review and they were doing a lot of double move, longer, longer play down the longer play development type stuff. And sure, he did underthrow Callaway for a touchdown, and that's Tyrod's fault. But when you've gotten beat up so aggressively right. in the first, that was the four, first time he had a clean game. pocket to throw the ball down the field like that yeah so anyway the jets beat him up and then baker comes in there his first possession was two minute running down the field so i can understand the jets trying to play a little bit of zone or something for a minute just to try to keep from giving up that field goal before halftime but i think they blitzed him right off but then but and he threw yeah. it right into the blitz yeah. and it, it looking sharp looking sh nobody was less than just blown away by Baker's ability to come right off the sidelines in that two minute drill and bang, bang, bang down the field. I mean, it was it was phenomenal. It really was. So I, that was I'm tr I'm giving Baker his due. And when it comes down to fantasy, is just you know there's playmakers on this offense. They got a good offensive line, and Baker automatically excuse me jumps right into a potentially startable fan 
football situa- fantasy situation. So certainly in two quarterbacks. Right. Realms, well, he's fired up immediately. Yeah. Obviously, he's in your starting lineup he, in the two quarterback situation. And one quarterback, 12 man league, you might, you'd be playing some matchups and kind of seeing how he develops here and how he takes, you know, uses these playmakers. And then, then really, startability for quarterbacks will come down to how you convert in the red zone. If you're kicking field goals, you're quarterback's right. not going to be great and he did get lucky he almost threw a pick in the red zone but they dropped it they got a field goal out of it that was their second sure field did. goal of the game um and, and the game broke their way it was it was great to see that they needed a little bit of luck to kick them over that hump and well, they had a lot of Baker, not they've had a lot of bad luck to be right, where they are right but i mean it's just like, it, like the left tackle seemed to be blocking better well, landry was making the spectacular catch when baker was yeah. throwing it to him versus like not quite coming up with it when tyrod's throwing it to him like everybody and just they the, or in that two minute the offense game. they fu- he, he got it smacked out of his hand and they fumbled and, and off his offensive line it got so it back he had yeah. some things bounce their way before we, I close shop on Tyrod a little bit, I just questioned the play calling a little bit to start that game and what they were doing. They didn't run the ball at all. Then Carlos Hyde was awesome for the rest of the game. He had like six carries in the first half. He had ended with 23. Yeah. Um, and then you run a flea flicker before you've even established a run at all. Right. And it was just like, I don't know what he you almost what got y'all, It's almost like you were setting up my man to fail and just to put like, Todd Haley was like, "All right, let's get let's get Tyrod out of here. Yeah. I can start <laughs> running my offense now." Yeah. I think it was DP that was like, "Todd Haley must have went up to he diagnosed Tyrod with a concussion." Right. He was hey, like, buddy, "You got a concussed. concussed. <laughs> right. Well, all right. So, so anyway, the rest of the offense is unlocked for sure. Right? This was right. definitely well. Real quick before we get off Baker, um, obviously the the comeback win was impressive, and the accuracy that you saw, the resolve, the quick decision making. Diagnosing the defense pre-snap, scrambling around, keeping plays alive, right. making throws on the run, converting the Russell Wilson-esque escapability, right. Right. not really looking to run, but able to run to keep things alive. Right, converting first down after first down, like all these things that he did were great. But I, I think that the thing that almost impressed me more than all of that was his post-game interview. He's just like as humble as can be i mean the first thing is he mentions the crowd and how happy he is for the city of cleveland to get this win and get this monkey off their back then they go into like the pressure and stuff and he talks about tyrod and how he you never want to come into a game like that you don't want to win the job like this right when your captain gets concussed right that's not what he win the job like this i did like the fact that he called him his captain right that was cool um but that, I mean, that's the game of the foot. That's the game of football, and he's ready for this challenge. Michael Irvin asked him, "How are you going to deal with this pressure that the whole city is now placing on your shoulders?" You know what he said? He said, "I didn't do all this by myself, exactly, and I'm not going to handle it like that." Yeah, he's like, "We got a lot of good players." He gave Jarvis a ton of credit. He gave the defense credit, the coaches credit. He's just a like a class act. He's, the NFL Network baked him a fucking cake. And yeah. he said, it's Carlos Hyde's birthday, and he had a baby. Let's, this is for Carlos. Right. You know? Yeah. It's just the first thing on his mind is his teammates. Yeah, solid. And caring about these dudes. And he just he has that innate ability to make everyone around him better. And that's uncoachable. It's unteachable. And you combine that with him being an extremely hard worker and having all the confidence in the world that I don't think you should confuse for cockiness. And I'm just super excited about Baker Mayfield and the whole Browns future. You can confuse it for cockiness. Some people aren't as good as hiding it as others. Most p- human beings who play a sport at that level are fairly cocky human beings. Some people are just better at hiding it and fronting in front of people. But you need that swagger like he has to play this position. Like, especially with these younger guys playing this game in this locker room. Like, they are going to respect that. They're going to latch onto that. Like... These Browns do. They love what Baker Mayfield is bringing. And they to the know he has here. their yeah. back. Right. Not, not everybody's Tim Duncan. Right. Okay. And and you know what? And behind closed doors, Tim Duncan's probably like, I'm the best goddamn center <laughs> I ever played this fucking game. Like, yeah. Yes. But then you got clowns like Jason McIntyre just grasping onto anything you can because they don't like this guy and said he wasn't going to be good about how what starting quarterback brings a cell phone goes back in the in the locker room and grabs his cell phone the first thing and brings his cell phone to all the interviews like a, a 22 year old millennial kid who just won the Browns first game what did he do with it nothing he didn't tweet anything he didn't do anything like he just had it he was like he likes his cell phone like even when him and Colin Cowherd were talking about it Cowherd kind of slipped up and was like well you know I'd probably grab my phone and like he was like because he was I, kind of agreeing with what McIntyre was saying and he was like really that's funny Dan really 
And then he was like, <laughs> then he was talking. They went further, and then he was like, well, you know, maybe I would grab my phone. And then they kind of, oh, well, no. And then the host, the the girl, I forget what they just switched girls. I don't listen to a lot of cowherd, but yeah, they switched girls. And she was like, why? What? What are you? So maybe he was texting his grandma or his mom. Yeah, like, right. Yeah. What are you so upset about? I take my phone all over the place too. Right. So does that guy. That guy lives on his phone, guaranteed. Yeah. Jason McIntyre doesn't do anything without his phone. He's it's, a clown. We should see how many tweets he has. But it's. 58,000. Yeah, it's oh, definitely it's tens of thousands. Sign something million. to do with your life. <laughs> Anyhow, let's get into the achievement unlocked with the rest of these Browns here, which would be an offense. Carlos Hyde, first and foremost, a player in this offense who saw in the second half what reaping the benefits of what Baker Mayfield was bringing to the table. Obviously, 23 carries for 96 yards uh, and two touchdowns. Uh, he had a catch with Tyrod, and then he had a catch with... Uh, with Baker, I believe. How many runs did he have in the first half? I believe it was six. Right. And none of those, there was like three series before they even gave him the ball. They started on the six on one of those series. He busted off a 22-yard run, followed by a five and a three-yard run. Then on third down, they decided to pass it again, and they got sacked for the loss of six yards. So Baker comes in, and all of a sudden, this game plan switches up a little bit. They're they're down, and they're they're running the ball. For the second half, but and Carlos has looked great. This offensive shout out to the offensive line, yeah, has been is, well, is really even, good, and they should be leaning on this offensive line. Well, even the first couple of games, Carlos has been good. You know, right. it just hasn't been like great like he was right. last week, and so and and you know, and that's the thing that you know Tyrod Taylor's given us, and and you know, take nothing away from Shady McCoy, but in game one, Carlos had twenty two carries. It just only went for sixty yards and a touch. In game two, he had sixteen carries against. New Orleans, and so that game one's against Pittsburgh. A couple which more got, catches in that game. Twenty-two carries, where he they got five quarters of football with the tie mm-hmm. in the overtime, and in New Orleans he gets sixteen carries for forty yards and a touchdown. And so neither one Jets, I mean Steelers nor Saints have you know been knocking down anybody defensively this year, and then so they play a better defense, you know, through two weeks anyway in the Jets. Second half, Baker Mayfield comes in there, the whole thing opens up, which is kind of. I mean, obviously, it's fantastic for everybody involved offensively, but you, you would, the way Tyrod Taylor and, and the mobile quarterback and the You would think back, it's a little counterintuitive. Yeah, you would think it necessarily wouldn't jump up like that, but it did, and maybe we kind of touched on it before. Get back people up a little bit. Maybe every, now they're worried about a pass. Back them up. They're worried about a pass. The offensive line's excited because they're getting first down. You right. know, again, I'm not going to knock Tyrod, but just the difference it did between... It seemed like, the, again, back to the, the whole, point, it did uh, seem like the offensive line was blocking a little better right. Everybody, Baker Mayfield the, was out there. Well, right. the offensive line was blocking better. The, the wide receivers were running crisper routes. They were catching anything <laughs> sure. to come close to them. You know, it's just like the whole shot in the arm that happened when Baker came in there, and Carlos was one of those guys. Of course, ba- birthday boy, had a kid same night, you know, all that was good destined stuff. destined to have a Just great game. destined to have a great game. Right. And he came through for us. And so going forward, uh, you know, Carlos Hyde looks like an RB1 to me. Sure. And so he, he, You got a good offensive line, and you got one of the best defenses, actually, in the NFL. So you're going to stay in games. Right. It's a great it's point. Maybe that, unless, unless, you know, Baker gives you a couple of pick sixes in the first quarter and you go down. I'm sure there'll be some growing pains. Yeah, sure. But he right fumbled, not, He could have had a fumble lost and an interception in that game. It's yeah. not going to be, you know, Sam Darnold was – we crown, he was crowned, and then this last game they say this is one of the most – They took his hardest, jacket back. This is, yeah, they did. They they – said give me that gold jacket back. yeah <laughs> this is one of the harder defenses to to play against especially on a cool like they they and it was a short week right. thursday night on the road they confused drew Brees in drew Brees's dome right and then they you know everyone kind of said McC- or not mccown uh darnold was going to struggle in this game and he did he did um so the question for me is is hyde was kind of one of those guys that was uh drafted i'm not going to say no man's land in the draft but he was sort he, of. He fell down a little bit, and he was tumbling about. He was down a little bit in the middle of the season, and then towards the uh, beginning of closer to the start of the regular season, he started to climb back up draft boards a well, little bit. Well, as soon as you saw him running in preseason, he was well, sure, up. but I mean before that, I'm, we're talking like July or something like maybe fifth, sixth round pick here. Well, it was it, he was bouncing like a ping pong ball because, you know, it was... Went from Niners and then he, he went to the Browns. Went from the Niners to the Browns the and then they were like, oh, we're going to draft Saquon. So now everybody's out on out on Carlos Hyde and then they don't draft Saquon for one... 24-hour period seemed like a lifetime for Nick for 
Carlos Hyde, and then they take right. Nick Chubb. And they sign Duke so to he, a longer he, deal. And then they signed to, so, yeah, just a crazy, crazy offseason for Carlos Hyde's stock. Fantasy stock was just all over the place this year. So he was a guy that you kind of drafted, and he's rewarding you right now for drafting him. A lot of people probably said, no way, I don't want anything to do with Carlos Hyde. He's a little bit older. We don't know what the hell is going to go on. Injury history. Um, but he's he's paying you dividends. Big Co likes him as an RB1. I'm a big, was always been a big Carlos believer. I believe he is a top 10 running back in this league. Right now, he's sitting at number nine in overall points in this particular league. Um, he's had He's averaging 16 points a game. He's had 13, 12, and then 24, obviously bolstering that. Average, average up a little yeah. bit but you would think that there's more 15 to 16 plus games coming than the 12 point a right. game uh on the way so he's a guy that maybe you're not if you drafted him last year in the startup you're not super invested in like you're not you didn't have to pay a ton for him he was kind of like yeah he, he stayed around basically long enough for you to say eh, i could roll the dice on carlos hyde here sure. maybe he'll pay dividends what do you do with him right now like Let's say you're zero and three for you know. Let's just use that as an example. Or I guess you could really have any record per yeah. se. But are you are you looking to get rid of Carlos Hyde? Do you trust Carlos Hyde for the rest of the year? And then moving forward next year, he's obviously probably not going to be a Brown. He has an out of this contract, and then he's a free agent uh, moving into his twenty eight, twenty nine year old season. He's twenty seven right now. Like ju- right. just had his birthday, right. so just turned twenty. So he'll be twenty eight moving into the next season. So I believe that there's a solid two good years of Carlos Hyde left even, as long as he stays healthy. He just turned 27? Yep. Wow, I thought he just turned 28. I know, right? Not, roll back the clock, Carlos Hyde. Right. right. So I I believe in him. You're part of your I believe in him for the rest of the year. Sure. For sure. Mm-hmm. And then, you you know, how many times, have, how, many, how long does it take for us to respect what Carlos Hyde can do? Like, don't give me any more... Oh, well, this happened. I still don't think he's respected. He does. I'm looking for pictures to put on his YouTube video, and like, there's none even of them of the Browns. (laughs) Yeah. Like, they won't even take a damn picture of him. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, like, I believe in him for the rest of the season. And honestly, man, I like. Let's say the let's say the Browns win some games this year, and yeah, they have an out in his contract, but he's still cheap, relatively cheap. So, what what's to say you can't even play with the Browns? In the realm of running backs, he's actually one of the higher. But I'm yeah, but in of running backs, but still you got you got one of the biggest salary, but you got plenty of salary cap for the Browns. I think, I think you just drafted a guy. He's looked good in spot duty. I think I don't think I really don't think there's any way that he ends up with the Browns. I don't. I'm year. I'm, so I'm going to disagree with you there and say there's no, I, I I don't have any percentages or ratios. Have, I'm just not going to buy into. Well, he's got out in his contract. I got twenty five. So I got twenty five that he's not a Brown next year. Let's do it. I they, owe you ten. They'd have to pay him five point nine million. Oh, you five OJ Wayne ten for a bet on by the. <laughs> Something we'll talk about later. They uh, they had they owe him five point nine as the cap hit if they keep him. It'd be two point three million in dead cap money to cut him. So maybe that's enough of incentive to not cut him. But uh, I, well, all right. So this pay him next double year, that next year. If he's him. next year if he's not a Brown, he's on a team that would have just signed him and that wants him. You know, obviously, right. you know, and the Browns wanted him this year. Is basically right, that's kind of where I'm heading. You, you got to you got to. 28 year old player 27 who's, right who's now right. as of last week but uh, moving towards next season he's basically and, be 28 so and if he stays healthy he looks like he, he was a rb1 last year if he stays healthy this year with what's going on in the browns and that offensive line and baker opening things up and you just saw him get 102 touches like there's no reason that would with the lack of running backs past five or six of them in the league that are actually scoring points right now there's no reason he can't stay healthy and be an rb1 this year i'm not saying he's going to be a top five but there's no reason he can't be 10 to 15 if he stayed healthy, he's usually a top twelve yeah. player. My point exactly. So I, I've if, been if preaching you're preaching this forever, yeah. So, so I mean, what do you pay for a Carlos Hyde if somebody is looking to get rid of him? I'm fine with having Carlos for the next two or three years on my team. I, I have him on teams, and I'm I'm hanging on. I'm not right. trading him. Yeah, I think I think even if you are zero and three, for me, three weeks into the season is too soon for me to call it a wrap on that season. I've I've seen too many weird things happen in fantasy football, so I'm like, if I have Carlos Hyde and I'm zero and three, I don't I'm not like trying to ship him off because he's an older running back and my team's not heading in the right direction. Like I've been four and zero to start the season before and miss the playoffs, so sure anything can happen. I'm not ready to call a ball just yet, and if I have Carlos Hyde, I'm holding on for dear life and I'm just riding this train out. Well, there's different zero and threes. I mean, if you're an zero and three team and you don't and your team is just that type, you can see that you're 100, 100 points less than the next guy and when it comes to points scored, 
there's different. You might have yeah. you might have Alshon Jeffrey and Le'Veon Bell on the bench and Doug Baldwin. That's an zero and three team that's a lot better than another zero and th- there's different zero right. and three teams. So I'm not going to fault you if you're a, a team. You could be one and two, zero and three, whatever, and you could be like, all right, I can get if and I've there's not. Let's just call it a twelve man league. There's not necessarily a guaranteed Carlos Hyde lover truth or like Casey is in every twelve man league. But if there's a Casey Myers, I call it respecter. I hate truther. All right, if you if there's a full <laughs> hut all the way, just respect the hell out of a guy and for in your league that respects Carlos Hyde pr- before this season, during this season, and after this season, and you can get a a you know a haul for him. I can't blame you for trading him, but this is this is you know. Right. This so is this this production's here to stay. And if you you know, so there's no reason to trade him unless you're getting something very 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 solid for him. Right. Like, so so back to qu- Casey's question, which I didn't even I didn't answer it either here. So he said, "What would you give up to get him?" And that would similarly go with, "What would you be accepting to trade him?" Let's you put know it this I mean? way: like, I wouldn't tr- I wouldn't take a first round pick from a guy who's got a studded out team that's obviously and I I've. I will say that I take a lot of I'm gonna take a lot of stock out of saying oh well you've got a bad team so you're gonna have an early first rounder you got a good team so you're gonna have a late first rounder because right now Casey and I have the best team in a league and we're zero and three and we have no first round picks so that sucks if it continues like that because we got a full starting lineup on the bench hurt but if you I wouldn't take a first round pick from a team that I'm pretty sure is gonna be in the top two or three when it comes to championship chase. I wouldn't want a late I wouldn't want one ten, one eleven, one twelve next year for Carlos Hyde because he's better than that. But you would give that up to get him. Yes. I would I mean, give up a first. If you're hunting Carlos. right now and, and you're starving for some R B production, I don't think think there's anything wrong with throwing Well, let's a- put it this way. Last year in one FFPC league, I gave away my first round pick going head into right the day of the trade deadline actually like 11 58 p.m or 10 9 58 whatever if it was 10 p.m 12 p.m whatever like 12 a.m i gave away my first next year for carlos hyde going into the playoffs just for running back depth and he was crushing it and go even this year like i didn't i didn't have that first round pick in the in the draft and i had carlos hyde and i'm happy about it you know like i not only did i use him last year in the playoffs i got unlucky and didn't win anyway but right, and what would you have done with that first round pick? Maybe you could have got carry on, but maybe you ended up with Rojo. You know, it was still too late. I I missed that spot. Didn't get carry on Johnson by one pick, so it didn't matter anyway. Right. Um. Maybe, but maybe you would have got Nick Chubb. Maybe right. you would have got DJ Moore. Maybe you would have got you know just a, a yeah, bunch. Maybe of guys. I would have got Rashad Penny. Maybe right. I would have got Rojo, who's not even right. being played. Yeah. Half that first round is unstartable at this point. And that's more than that. Most right. of that first round Most is unstartable. And it's like Saquon and, and it, Calvin and, if, and Carryon. If you look back, other than the 2014 wide receivers and last year's running backs, that's the way the rookie drafts goes. Right. More often than not, there's one or two good players, and you don't know who they are for three years. Right. And so. The running backs last year, last year's running back rookie class spoiled us. And then you obviously had Zeke at 101 and Melvin Gordon and you had Gurley a couple years ago. So there was players. There's always players. But yeah, but you don't know. Most of the time, Gurley was 1-1, Zeke was 1-1. So you knew and then you knew what was happening. Then it was Saquon this year. But overall, you don't really know. So yes, I would give, if I'm legitimately contending, I would give up my late first round pick. You don't really know. Carlos Hyde. You don't really know who. So you're saying like if it, if obviously you don't know what pick's going to be what at this point, but like a one five per se right now for Carlos Hyde. If I if I think that's sure. If I think I if I think I'm chasing the championship, not if I'm floundering around and I may or may not make the playoffs. Right. Because that's the difference. Well, right now I got a I got a pretty I got a I think I have a good team in this league, but David Johnson's killing me. Yep. right now yep. not killing me like t- he's killing me because he's not scoring uh two players worth of points yeah um and i got carlos hyde who's holding me down in that second running back spot and like i don't i don't want to sell carlos hyde. exactly like i'm just oh, i'm just hoping that i got good receivers i got Devonte adams and mike evans and uh marvin jones and doug baldwin's hurt right now and just and then a bunch of secondary pretty good receivers that most people want on their teams uh, my running backs are hurting a little bit and i could i'm one and two i could very well try to unload a carlos and just be building for next year but i'm hanging on to all my carlos stock because it's you know even if you are struggling a little bit it's the way dynasty goes just like big co said like you have a, a team that maybe isn't doing that great right now but it's probably it, it, it could be a good team you're just not catching any breaks or you got some injuries and you got a, a 
a roster full of starters on your bench right now because you can't play them. Right. Um, so sometimes it's not just because it's not going great one year. Next year, it could be you could be like, oh, where would this team come from? They're kicking everybody's ass. Like, so don't get uh, too upset when you're seem like oh, I thought I had a good team and it's not going that great this year. Well, that's what I'm saying. Oh, so like, babe, would you give would you trade away Carlos Hyde for Kenny Galladay? Somebody who's almost ungettable right. at this point. You know, like if you if to move for me to move Carlos Hyde, you would have to get an absolute asset. You don't move I mean, Carlos Hyde for Kenny Galladay's 25. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but 25 in wide receiver years is like he's teenager, you know. So but that's but what sure, I'm but, no, that's but a, an that's, asset that's a good who's point. ascending. But no, I wouldn't. If if because the running, I, I like I can the running back position is just it's too hard to find. One thing's constant: if Carlos is healthy, he's in that upper echelon of running backs. Yeah, there you so, go. There you go. There you go. The moral of the story with Carlos Hyde is, is the 49ers should have never let this guy go. He should still be the guy over there. Mm. And we're buying, not selling Carlos Hyde. Love Absolutely. It. All right, let's take a quick break. We'll be back faster than Troy Aikman can say Baker Mayfield. Well, let's pick up with another Browns running back. It's all Browns all day today. Um, let's go with, with Nick Chubb. We haven't seen a lot of him. What I have seen, I liked. He looks good. Uh, how do you guys feel about Chubb? I, I think personally, I know we just said we're buying Carlos Hyde, and that's because of what could be potentially happen for the rest of the season and for seasons to come maybe somewhere else and then for somewhere else and then the future of what this Browns offense is going to be that being Nick Chubb I'm totally buying into and I think there could be some people who maybe spent some higher picks on him that maybe soured on him a little bit and he had soured a little bit through the draft process like at at first I I felt like he was one three one four and then by the time we were drafted near the end there in rookie drafts like he was dropping down to the six seven range sure well I well yes because after for the late rookie early rookie drafts eh, maybe even some of the early rookie drafts he was one six in some people's but by the time you if you had a late rookie draft and you'd already seen Carlos Hyde get a first couple carries in the preseason his short-term outlook was already diminished and like you said hadn't seen a lot of them three nobody carries. likes a long-term outlook in dynasty it, it, god forbid it. And if you can't get anything out of them three carries 21 yards week one two carries for 14 both of those are seven ca- yards per clip right for what that matters on a l- very small sample and two for six last week and last week i thought that he, he got in he snuck a run down to the near the goal line and i'm i got carlos like i just said and i was like oh damn it they're gonna give him he got him down there they're gonna give it to him but he he got tackled and then they 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 brought carlos in maybe because of the situation of what had carlos had going on with the baby the birthday right all the above maybe but he did look good and i thought he was gonna sneak a touchdown in there sure but well, only seven carries to this point no no catches no reason to do anything else with him you got carlos who can shoulder the load Well, that's the thing. And Carlos has done work, you know, and especially, you know, looking decent first two weeks and looking great last week. You just you see Carlos got 20 something carries. Nick Chubb gets two. It's not even it's not even a split. It's not even a Mm -hmm. running back. Duke Johnson can't even get a touch. I mean, it's it's Carlos Hyde's backfield all the way around at this point. So that's your short term outlook on Nick Chubb is he's the backup. And yes, I mean, all running backs can get hurt. Carlos Hyde's Absolutely. been hurt, and until Carlos Hyde gets hurt, Nick Nick Chubb is on the outside looking in for more more chances. He can't even produce without chance. You know, it's right. obviously opportunities, everything, and he's getting no opportunity right now. But I agree. I think this is a great opportunity to go try and buy some Nick Chubb because he, did, like you said, you had to spend a decent amount to get him, whether that was in a startup or a rookie draft. Right. He was a fairly hot commodity, and now he's not getting you anything. Yeah, and I could see it definitely being sour on him. I completely. Agree. And I mean, obviously, maybe the value's up a little because people are excited about the Browns are in people's mouths right now. Right, mm-hmm. um, right. Obviously, you could have probably got them for even cheaper last week. I, 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 just, I, I, I disagree with that just because how good Hyde looked. Yeah, you sure. know, maybe, maybe Fair I don't enough. think he's. Yes, the Browns are on. Yes, Baker Mayfield, the Browns, they're everywhere right now. But it, just because how good how Carlos Hyde looks, I think it further cements the next week until. Further notice with no Carlos Hyde injury, I think Nick Chubb is doing minimal. So and and I and I referenced Nick Chubb in a dynasty trade I made last week on the Patreon side of the show, and I will revisit that trade on Patreon. So go find us on Patreon to catch up with us. Get us that five dollar. Well, tell, tell tell us tell us what you did. I can't do it. Can't do it in public. <laughs> I'm keeping my personal trades on the Patreon side of things. Keeping it in the family. <laughs> keeping it in the family. All right. Well. Patreon.com 
slash the FF Dynasty. Fair enough. Um, but I do, I do think that um, people are people want the payoff now, so people are willing to trade maybe Chubb for somebody who's playing now and can get them points for now. For me personally, like I know I just sent over Sony Michelle for Nick Chubb. I had a I had a third worked in there just to see if I could get the third with for Sony. I'm the Sony owner trying to get Chubb. I've been a Chubb guy. I had Chubb above Sony. Uh, there's nothing wrong with Sony. Obviously, it hasn't been great for him uh, in the first couple games for the Patriots. Not Nothing to be like, oh my God, I, nothing to get the Sony motors nah. churning. He hasn't looked as electric as he did in college. That knee, I think, is probably still hindering him. He dropped a couple passes out of the right. back. Right, the passing so. game is what has you a little down, but he was never really so much of a passing guy. He's looked great running the ball for the most part. I think he's been carrying guys and, and creating yards as the yards Gr- created. He's grinding it out. Right, I think he's looked good. I don't have any problem with him, and now you got Burkhead on IR. So, you know, there's probably going to be more and more Sony, and then this offense, the Patriots offense will continue to grow as the season goes on, as we always see. Plus, you get, you've added Gordon, you'll get Edelman back, yada, yada, yada. I'm just, for me personally, I've always valued Chubb more than Sony. So, I've right, currently, uh, there's a trade sitting on somebody's desk for Sony and uh, for Sony and a third, or Sony for Chubb and a third. Yeah. And that that's just the way I feel about it. Like maybe it's the wrong call, but I'm a big Chubb supporter, so I'll I'll I'm okay with waiting for my guy to right. produce. Well, you may be trading away opportunity because that um we see and that's the, kinda what I'm banking on. Somebody yeah. of being like, Oh, well this guy's out there now, he's on the Patriots, maybe they there's a book out now saying that the Patriots could load this up again for years to come. Yeah, the guy that, that wrote the book, he said that, that he sees them playing Tommy and Bill filling it up again and basically until they get another championship. Wow. Well the the R B scout, Adam put out a tweet that showed that um I think maybe Sony had been in for 38 snaps, and he either got target or carried yeah. 29 of them the, or something right, like that. The percentage of him touching the ball when he's on the field is a lot. And, His, and yes. people are saying, well, Bill Belichick needs to stop being so stubborn and proven while they drafted him at number one. I don't think that's what it is. I think they really, truly believe in this guy, and they exactly. they want to ride him. So, yeah, I mean, I, I've, they're not trying to prove anything. They, they proved that they think he's a good player. Like, yeah. What well, does that even mean? That... Like that, if if the Seahawks that they were forcing it to him in this last game, as opposed to maybe giving other people shots of doing things because the, who who's going to run the ball for them? Jeremy Hill's on IR. Burkhead banged up his neck. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Right. Well, and, uh, it's and, not me. And, I know. And, I'm not saying. I'm just and, whoever and, this is. And every tons of people. All trades are Idiots. circumstantial. And where you're sure. trying to, where you're trying to trade away Sony for Chubb, you got plenty of running backs. I do. And you that's don't fair. even need Sony. You don't. I don't. You don't need Sony's production. I don't. In the I got Mark Ingram coming three back. Three to ten, which is another reason to. If, if Sony picks up and takes off in the next three weeks, you might look like the bad end of that trade if you get it done. Right. But you don't even need you don't you don't even close to needing to start Sony because right. of the way you have your team built. So if you're prepared to do that trade in, I think it's a fair trade for both sides. Right, and I mean that's kind of what I'm banking on is that somebody maybe even valued Sony more than Chubb. This was a startup and it was an auction, so they probably were about the same price. Yeah. Um, and I I ended up buying Sony Michelle. I had Chubb for a while. This guy outbid me. Yep. Um, so I that that's just. Oh, a case that I have right now of I'm trying to go get Chubb. I'm trying to trade in Sony just because I believe in what Chubb has. So I'm putting my money where my mouth is with the Chubb. I'm going to buy all the Chubb. <laughs> money, mouth, and Chubb. Those things those are things hilarious. all sentence. go together. <laughs> That's a hilarious <laughs> sentence. So you want to... I got, I got no words. So we're going to move on I from... I the fifth <laughs> about the Chubb. But well, no, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with that. You're a Chubb guy. You've liked him more than Sony. I've Since I've covered Sony and, and Chubb, I haven't been able to decide which one I like more. So it's a fair trade depending on who you like. I mean... So I'm, I'm all about... I guess the... But the, I'd be going to buy Chubb. I'm, I'm all in on that. Trying to get as much Chubb as I can. In every league that I'm in where I don't have any Chubb, I've been sending out offers just to see what could happen. Well, that's the thing about... The Chubb situation. If you're a buyer, you need to understand that you may be buying for next year without a Carlos Hyde injury because he's getting nothing right now. Right. And I'm okay with that. And they have Duke Johnson who they're not utilizing. Sure. And so you may be buying for straight up 12 month hold. Absolutely. So you just brought up Duke Johnson, Big Co. It's a good transition in. Let's let's cover this guy here. He's uh not yeah. not covering not doing much for you right now. Same situation as Chubb, except for he we he is supposed to be the third down pass catching back and he's right. getting nothing. What'd you call him off air? He said he's the, the, the most talented, least utilized player in the NFL right now. Yeah, yeah. It, well 
Exactly. Duke Johnson might be the best player not getting used by his team in the NFL right now. And I can't think of anybody better that's not getting any action. Right. And every time he's touched it, it's looked awesome. He's had a, he had a huge no first down pickup in this in this last Browns game that helped them out. It was he had a he had a spin move that everyone was like, "What was that spin move about?" <laughs> but he ended up he crept along the sideline, caught, caught the ball, got the first down, kept the chains moving. When and the, the crazy thing is, is like Duke Johnson's like I know the snap aren't the be all end all but he's getting on the field he's he's not not on the field he's right. getting out there well, he's you, not not on the he's, field he was on the field what about 70 percent of the same type of 70 percent of the snaps that Hyde was but Hyde got 26 I think, touches and I think or 28 the, touches and he got four I think the total for the year is something around 135 to 96 or something like that for Chubb to yeah or for uh Hyde to Right Duke about Johnson seventy here. percent. I have just some quick math in my head, but yeah, that's Duke Johnson. So like, he's out on the field, and obviously you just lost Josh Gordon, and maybe that's a, maybe there's a little bit of opportunity opening up for Duke. You just paid this. It's kind of strange that you paid this guy. I know Jason's a big follow the, follow money. the money kind of guy. I don't necessarily subscribe to that notion, but. Uh, well, it's not like you're not, you're not blindly following money. You're following a guy who's got the most catches out of a running right. back since who's he entered the league. Who's an RB1 last year. He, he's, he's got the most catches since he entered the league. Obviously, another year, and, and Christian McCaffrey will blow right past him. But two two catches for 24 yards last week and two carries. And the and less la- the week, you know, three carries a week before that. It's, he's been trending down. He got five carries week one. He's right. been going down ever since. So, I mean, and a lot of people were saying coming into this season that Todd Haley as an OC has historically been a one back kind of guy. And it's working out like that. So it certainly is. Basically, there is no selling Duke Johnson. Absolutely um, not. If you have Duke Johnson. Couldn't even sell him in the offseason before any of this happened. You couldn't sell him while he was still considered good. <laughs> right. So basically, Duke Johnson has to be a buy because I don't know what he could cost you. This is a next, year, much. a next year buy. You, but, in the, but the biggest problem is because before, right before he got that extension, it was like, look, where everybody was looking for the next Jarek McKinnon. And, you, you know, you people were shopping out there that it could be T.J. Yeldon out of Jacksonville that would go out of there and he could potentially be a three down back for somebody. Duke Johnson could go be a three down back for somebody because he but then he gets the extension and you're like, OK, well, at least he's going to be getting 60 catches a year. He's on pace for 10. Right. You know what I mean? More than that, but 30. 30 is a big drop down from 70. Sure. And a back end RB1 last year to somebody that's not even flex worthy now is right. just a terrible turn for Duke Johnson. Terrible turn. So you got to be able to, in a short bench league, I don't know how you can buy him because he's going to clog you. Yeah. And because of the way they've handled the Carlos Hyde situation, if Carlos Hyde was to go down, you don't know if Nick Chubb comes in there and grabs that. Well, right. And then moving on to next season, it's the, I, I, that's essentially what I would be going after to buy Duke Johnson for because I do believe he's a really good player and maybe they end up trading him or something in the offseason something along those lines but like are you buying are you, you you thinking even if Carlos leaves does Chubb just slide right in and then Duke's just put on the back burner again because of the you know Todd Haley is a guy who has typically used one one back in a system and and you're seeing that right now and maybe this just carries right over to the Nick Chubb era so those are that's those are great points about Todd Haley and, and how he used Le'Veon Bell. Obviously, Le'Veon Bell's was the man. Yeah. Um, why wouldn't he use him all the time? I, I don't know. I don't think that Chubb is quite the receiver that Hyde is. Not that Hyde's getting a ton of receiving work. None of these running backs are catching a bunch of balls in this offense for right, whatever you got, you reason. You already got Jarvis already catching all right, and your he, running back time. Yeah. Right. Uh, although, his ADOT, although his ADOT is increasing. Um, I... I'd be down to go buy Duke Johnson. I'll say this in his defense. I can't find it anywhere on Roto World or on like other websites to give you injury information. But I remember in watching Hard Knocks that Todd Haley was upset with like Hugh Jackson because Duke Johnson wasn't practicing because he was dealing with some sort of injury. I want to say it was like a hamstring or something. But they were holding him out of practice in the in the in training camp, and so maybe he's dealing with something that we not really don't know 100 percent about maybe that's why they're scaling back his usage a little bit i don't there's no reason why he shouldn't he's on the field why wouldn't they be targeting him i just i, I don't, don't get it it's a, so it's a strange situation so well it hasn't been a pass heavy team yet this is true and 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 really before but we it's don't been pretty conservative we don't know where baker takes this play team. defense don't turn it over we don't know where baker takes this team and somehow some way with the one win in two years the coaching staff the head coach stayed in place and they changed coordinators. It's been a very leadership 
a turnover field situation, player turnover. Like it's been all over the place. So now that you got, if Baker comes in and writes this ship and everybody keeps their job and Todd Haley stays, yes, it's, we don't, if it's a one back system and Carlos hides there, it's hide. We don't know if, if if Nick Chubb jumps in there, we don't know if Duke John- if if Carlos Hyde goes down. Maybe it's Duke Johnson that comes in here and just tears it up for ten weeks if he can stay healthy. You know, so if if the coaches stick around, we don't really know how it's going to go. But it looks like Todd Haley wants to use one back so, like he has been, and that's the way it's working out. So by by Duke Johnson or just kind I of would. just kind of let I'm, him be. I'm a believer in the talent. And, and that's I've, what you're buying him because you believe in the talent. Right. And most likely probably hoping that something changes next year or by week 10. Or, you're, yeah, right. you're buying him because you know he can play slot. You know he can catch anything that gets near him. And every time he's ever taken a handoff, I thought he, thought he looks really, really good. Sure. If they do have a good offensive line. And most of these handoffs have come with Tyrod out there. And it's not been many. But even last year before Tyrod got there and, and just, you know, terrible situations, Dukes always look good. So... Somebody would be dying for you to send him a two and smash the accept button for Duke Johnson. You wouldn't have to. That's too much. Right. It's crazy. But that's, that's what that's I'm saying. Thing. Like somebody would be just I'd smashing that thing. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. You. I. I mean, if I'd I'd give up a two to get Duke Johnson. I'll be getting a three back. Maybe even a four. I'll give you a two. You give me a Duke and three and a four. Or I'd be offering you a three for Duke, and you say no. I'll give you a three and a four for Duke. Something like that. I mean, I just, just what are you going to do with him? He's killing your roster right now, and some people. People, myself included, get so Impaciente. interested. What, what? Impatient. Very impatient. What can you do for my team right now? Yeah. Duke ain't going to do nothing but kill a roster spot until further notice. Yeah, I think we should make Duke great again. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> he All can right. be huge. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap up the Cleveland Browns running back situation. And we'll maybe shoot over to David Njoku, Ooh. another uh, fan favorite. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's talk a little David Njoku because we've... We would discuss it a little bit off air, and there's a little bit of a mixed uh, feelings around the room, perhaps. So uh, I'm I'm in camp. Let's go get David and Joku. You guys agree? Well, this is this is given to what we've been talking about. One of the things that you can say about the Browns is they got a talented roster, mm-hmm. offensively, defensively, and if you just pay attention to what's happening here, you got basically. You're running an RB one out there each and every week and name in high high volume as Carlos Hyde. You got Duke Johnson and Nick Chubb just basically waiting in the wings for needed action, needed deployment. They're just hanging out, gassed up, ready to go. And now all revved up with no place to go. Nowhere to go. Meet and low, now baby. you got David and Joku over here who's again, the dude is what, twenty two years old, just turned twenty two a couple months ago. He's an athletic freak. He had really good flashes on limited opportunity last year, and then he goes and explodes in the preseason. I think he got twenty balls and four touchdowns last year, maybe. Okay, something like that. Ridic- like not. Then, yeah, his touchdown rate was high on his right. catches. P- touchdown per catch. I see where you're going with that. But like his preseason looked incredible. Had two in one game, exactly, and it was a, the David and Joku show yep. from both quarterbacks. From both right. quarterbacks, and then the pre- regular season gets here and three for thirteen. Four for twenty, two for thirty-six. Which sounds like a fair amount of tight ends I've been fucking with. So, right. Well, tight end, tight end hasn't been easy. Right. And there's no doubt about it. But the thing about it, what you were talking about on air when we started discussing Njoku, is the love for Njoku is real. It's just the production is the lack of it is real too. So, right. If you go out and try to buy Njoku, you're buying somebody who probably. I mean, I'd much rather start Jared Cook every week. You know what I mean? Like you, you have to buy. If you're buying Njoku, you're gonna have to give up somebody who's worth a starting spot for somebody who's gonna sit on your bench. And we talked about that in draft season for startups about buying Njoku to be on your team. It was buying him to put people like that. You buy him and you put him on your bench, and and you know. You know that he's solid. You know he's got the all the potential in yeah. the world, but potential ain't gonna win you nothing in fantasy football. And you know that's that's the thing. It's like I don't mind buying in Joku. I just think, but when he starts producing, you ain't gonna be able to afford it, right? So once he scores his first touchdown in the regular season and beats a dude after the catch, then it's gonna be like, oh man, I, now I can't I can't attain him. And 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 maybe if. If this is a new dynasty league you're in and that startup happened this year and you had to pay a premium to get him on your team, you had to use a high pick on him, you had to spend a bunch of money in an auction, maybe that owner's not going to be 
wanting to give him up because he really loves him because he had to pay a ton to get him. Well, there's two different owners for startups this year. There was the one before the preseason game, and there was the one after the preseason game because after the preseason game was double the price. Right, but it was already really high. It was. But maybe maybe it's a, a, a league that's already established, and they got him in a rookie draft last year at a certain point where it was just like, okay, I heard all these tight ends are good. Let me get one of them. I kind of need a tight end. And now you've had him for a year and three games, and you haven't seen a bunch of return on your investment. And and. Now's the time to pounce if you if you couldn't pay the premium before. I'm not saying sell the farm to get him or give up an awesome piece, but I'd be giving up something decent to get him. I mean, I, I'm, right. now's the time to at least try and stab. Right. So this is there's some things working in your favor for Najoku, mostly all being Baker Mayfield. Right. And what where Baker Mayfield likes to attack on the field and who Baker Mayfield likes to throw to. Mark Andrews Crushed is a product it. of Baker Mayfield. I'm not saying that obviously he didn't make Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews is his own guy, but. But Baker the two Mayfield of them made defi- him in Madden. <laughs> definitely elevated uh, Mark Andrews' stock some, and Mark Andrews is paying dividends to the Ravens right now. I think he's a good player as well. Right. Um, but he got a- Baker loves to hit that slot. Loves to have an athletic wide receiver or uh, tight end kind of playing the wide receiver position. So there's definitely drilling that seam. Some and you saw it right off the rip. Tore as soon that as Baker up. came in. Right to Najoku, second play, I think. Right. And first play, maybe. Hit, first hit, play. Well, he hit Landry on the first play up like in the middle of the right. field and then hit Njoku in the middle right. of the field the very next play. So it's then he fumbled, but they two got two plays straight up the seam. You're hoping this elevates what you've been you're you're hoping that this unlocks what you were waiting for with Njoku. I'm I think for me personally, with what exactly what Big Co said of, of what I have to give up right now to get him because I think I have to give up a good starter to put him on my bench and, and hopefully wait for this to happen. He's I, still I, 22. Right. No, no, I know. He's he's really young. Second year tight end. He's there's, still developing. He's still learning how to and play. And there's nothing wrong with that. Normally, I'm all, I love grabbing a guy and developing him because of what I saw in my evaluation. I'm just not 100% sold on having to give what it just it really depends on what I'm giving up to get Njoku and I, yeah. he's just not somebody that I don't, I'm going necessarily after maybe it's dumb right now maybe I should be for all the reasons that I just said obviously he's a really athletic guy awesome and, dude off the field well, here's, here's hard worker exactly well here's the deal if you like Jay smart shit if you got Njoku in the rookie draft last year and it was like maybe he was the last tight end taken and not the first Some, one. Right, if somewhere you, in the if, second round. If you just took him because he was the last of one of those tight ends that you're quote-unquote supposed to take, right. then maybe he's gettable. But if that owner got him this year, then he paid. Then he right. he yeah. wanted David and Joku. Right. right. Like there's, you're not gonna pry David and Joku away for anything less than high retail value from anybody that purchased him going into this year because they paid the do- David and Joku price for somebody that wasn't even startable and obviously after the per- first week of the preseason you thought he was going to be startable but then life hits you in the face and you're like oh preseason and regular season two different things right and defensive schemes players playing a lot yeah. of different factors but i mean i just i just want to come on here and say on record that i feel a david and joku explosion coming very soon and after that then he's pretty much going to be unattainable. Sure. Well, so. uh, yeah, yeah, it only takes one game for to have an explosion. Af- ask Calvin Ridley. But the thing about it is, is in this game, when Baker Mayfield came in there, they were playing from behind. They needed to throw the ball. And Antonio Callaway and, and Jarvis Landry put 25 targets between the two of them. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Well, and and Ma- that's and that's and that's, that's on the fly thing now. That's sure. not like, hey, we had a week of prep. Baker's coming in now. Let's get his tight end involved like he wants and to that play. Gives me, that, that, that helps give me some pause. You came to him right away and you thought, maybe that he would be a little bit bigger of an emphasis of what for Baker for the rest of this ball game. I didn't necessarily see it. It's one game. It's a half of a game, essentially. Right. And Njoku didn't have any targets from Tyrod and Tyrod right. was targeting Callaway and Jarvis plenty before we left. Yeah, I, it's, it comes down to what I what I have to pay for him. I mean, as per usual, there's some guys like right now, I'll give you whatever, you know, I'm, I'll overpay for carry on Johnson right now because I want him on all my teams. Um, but I'm not. I'm not necessarily willing to overpay for Najoku. Yes, just because I. I haven't. There hasn't even like you've you've seen a little bit of a shimmer here and there, but I haven't seen like something to be like okay. There, well, there it is exactly because if David and Joku was to blow up next week, there's nothing that says it's necessarily sustainable to affect your lineup for the next couple of weeks unless he comes out there. We've and seen keeps, OJ Howard 
go up way up and here. Down. And then, then uh, people wanted nothing to do with O.J. Howard in this offseason. And now O.J. Howard's becoming, you know, well, he followed up. He followed one game up where he had like one long play for a touchdown with another game with some with some steady production. In, right. In a floor Which is of, easily of, something to joke who could do with right. Mayfield in this system and he and his skill personal skill set. But like you're saying, you re- you're ready to overpay for carry on Johnson to get him on your team because it could be very, you know, plug and play. Not take him out of your lineup. For and the I'm re- the wrong guy to ask because I'm not a huge tight end guy. Yeah. Like, well, most people aren't. Most people. Well, this, some people will be like, well, I really need to do something about this tight end position. I just chalk it up as let me. Yeah. Like, Casey doesn't sweat like, out. I'm not going to sweat this because everyone else is pretty much in my same position yeah. outside of well, three guys. Maybe. And, yeah. Right. But I think Joku and, could elevate sure, himself into that sure. realm. I mean, he's just so young and raw and talented and hardworking and big and physical and a specimen. I just, but now it, he's got a quarterback that likes to Can throw he come alive the in the sure. red zone? I get, yeah, well, that. But also, the part of the reason why you, you got to like, you really, really got to like the outlook for Carlos Hyde moving forward is part of the reason why it might not be. The upside might not be there for Njoku unless he scores eight touchdowns the rest of the way out because. They're going to lean on the running game with Carlos Hyde, and they got target magnet Jarvis Landry, and Callaway looks like an absolute stud. Yeah. And Higgins is not a pretend wide receiver. That man can play ball. Right. So, you know, so, and maybe they throw it to Duke Johnson every once in a while. Right. Just maybe. Just so maybe. I think to close up, I think it's a wise move to go test the market for Najoku and see, see what's what, to see which owner and how they feel a certain way. Maybe somebody's trying to get rid of him. Maybe they're not. Maybe somebody that I don't like as much on my teams that the Najoku owner likes a lot and I could package up or what would you, would you sell them? Like what, I'm dang what would it take, ready what to would it take for you to let go of them. I'm almost ready to move like do a one for one swap. Not quite because I feel like I could get more for it, but move Evan Ingram for, for Njoku. Like not Ooh. that someone's going to do me, me. Someone would probably give me that. Oh, like, I'll, I'll get, if I had Evan, if I had Njoku, I'd give it to you for Evan Ingram. I can't make that trade straight up, but I'm not. It's not too far off. I mean, Evan Ingram hasn't done much for you, and then he just got hurt. And well, obviously, he didn't do he's much. hurt right this second. He didn't geez. do. He hasn't done a ton this year. He's had like one good game, and it's true. Then they got Saquon and OJ, OBJ back in there, so it, I don't think it's too far. I don't think we're too far away from these two guys being on an even playing field as far as everyone's concerned. Right. And you have always had to pay a high premium for David and Joko. I'm just saying that right now it's not quite as high. Well, I mean, I'm and I've never like again, I I couldn't understand the Evan Ingram thing. Like I I understand the targets and I understand all that. Evan Ingram maybe feels a little safer to me to to spend some money on than David and Joko, but Maybe not. I think I think I might be with you. I think I would rather have the raw upside of what David Njoku brings. That's it. Exactly. That's it's the raw upside versus Evan Ingram was a lot more. You got Baker what, Mayfield, who's a younger guy, could grow with Njoku. You got Eli, who's probably at the end of his career, and I think Sterling Shepard and uh, Saquon and Odell is going to demand his thing. You no, know, I, 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 I was not, never a big again back to the tight end thing for me. Like I was never going to pay what you needed to pay for Evan Ingram. I thought it was ridiculous. Right. Not well, this year. I'm sure. not. I can't argue with you about the target demand outside of Evan Ingram in New York with Saquon and Odell. And I'm, I'm a, you, you know, the um, Sterling Shepard. I can't argue with that either. But Casey just said it. It's the raw upside of Njoku versus Evan Ingram played a lot more wide receiver in college. Like Evan Ingram came into the NFL ready to run around and do more with his with route running and be a wide receiver, which is what you want out of your tight end. But I mean, I don't. I think if you line them both both up, David and Joku is a the purest raw talented. Like I don't. I don't, I want to I mean, get away. The metrics from, are better. Well, with yeah, Ingram, but, but let me say that I want to get away from calling athleticism talent. Yeah, like sure. at, Antonio Brown's the most talented wide right. receiver in the league. His and spider Julio, chart looks terrible. Julio is the most athletic wide receiver in the league. There's two different. De- I don't. You just because you can run fast, that's not a talent. Yeah, that's we'll a, ask, that's being an athlete. Ask John Ross about that. Right. Okay. So yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So I think David and Joku might be the most athletic tight end in the league, but I think that there's more skills coming out of Evan Ingram right now. But if the ta- if the targets are spread around just the same and there and there's the start abilities kind of up in there because OBJ and, and Saquon are getting 25 targets every game, I can see that that should, if you're going to middle that production and you'd rather have Njoku, I can see the Evan Ingram thing. But How about like Hunter Henry and a two for Njoku all day? What is that too easy? What are you, you giving or you taking? I mean, I whichever end you want to be on, I don't know. 
Is I that, would, is that I would not, take, that's not enough? Yeah. I, I, I would take the Hunter Henry in a two. Uh, see, I think you're, you're way on the two. other way. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah that's two. a great trade then. All great right. trade because both people are happy. I'll take I'll take Hunter Henry in a second rounder. And I like what Joker. I've seen from Hunter. Obviously, he's hurt right now. Well, yeah, bummer. you don't like the but you get the, the seconds to wake up for the to make up for the injury <laughs> right now. Yeah, yeah. I'll just go pick up Joe Schmo and play my tight end position for the rest of the yeah. year. Yeah, which I'm not starting to Joku anyway, so you probably have another tight end. There you go. Right. right. Anyway, let's move on. Fun, let's, fun let's, trade. Let's fun trade. Talk, fun tra- talk about these trade. receivers and then lay Cleveland down to rest. We'll end the Browns talk with what I think is the best buy on the Browns offense right now in Antonio Callaway. Is that there? It is. is there, oh. Is, it, are we in a, is this a lean, a like, you, you agree, <laughs> disagree, you're hitting the green button? Right, right. A solid agree. I, I'm, I'm liking it. I, I'm not going to bet against you on this. I believe it is. He's the cheapest guy to buy. Sure. And he's probably going to give you the most return on your investment, the biggest bang for your buck. We've seen volume. Just saw 10 targets. Obviously had some drops that Jay Wayne's going to pick apart over there, but the speed is there. The bomb that he caught from from uh, Tyrod to tie that game. He yeah. had another one in this to, game. The bomb that he caught against the Saints. Yo, it, he that, hit the NOS button on that thing. It, like, that, <laughs> like the ball was trending down already, and the trajectory was going down, and he wasn't even. He's half. already in full speed, he, and then he hit the NOS button. It was. I don't think he should have caught that ball. Right. Like I don't know how he right. caught up to it. He got under it. He's fast as. Is he right. needs to be to catch that ball. I don't know how fast he was That's on the speed. Button. But we talked fast. about I it. saw Fast and Furious, we, but we talked about it in on the show already about the underthrow that Tyrod had in, in this ball game. But Callaway easily could have had another bomb touchdown. He was open. Yeah. Um, and that could be right on his resume right now because right. when you look at the targets and the amount that he caught, it doesn't really add up. You're like, what was this knucklehead doing? And there is a knucklehead out all, off the field factor with Callaway. Big that, time. That he didn't even play college ball. Helps helped you get him for cheaper in the rookie draft, and hopefully you invested. And if you didn't, there's still opportunity to go pick him up from somebody who would also probably get a deal in this uh, deal, I guess. We could ring the register a little bit. Upgrade sure. where, from where they took him probably in the third or something along those lines. And and you, well, everyone can make a little bit of money here. Well, that's the problem. And you can get a good player. That's the problem with a, trying to acquire Callaway now. There's a there's a chance, a better than fifty percent chance, he's in a sharp person's hands because he was to come out of the rookie draft, excuse me, or the startup to be the guy that took Callaway. You're probably probably somebody took him. I think he's and, in one of two guys' hands. I think he's in a smart guy's hands or a guy who had no business drafting him. He just read some stuff and was like, "Well, Cal, people, because people were touting Callaway as a potential guy who could have been the first receiver in this." Because the worst guy in our home league right now. Has Antonio Callaway? There's no way he knows anything about Antonio exactly. Callaway. And he, he was like the last legitimate good player to take in the second round. Right. Like really fell off after yeah. Callaway and That's, Kane and so Traquan. I think more than likely there was a lot of buzz out this, there for people who didn't know anything to, to he, pick up on. Okay, call it fifty percent. Have you got a half a chance of him being in the sharp guy's hands? Let's say he's in Casey's hands, and you understand that a four for twenty receiving line against the Jets is always oh, in my hands a lot right now. A lot better than what it looks like. Right, but that guy, that other league where he's in the dumbest guy we got, the you know the worst team in the league in the home league, he's got Callaway, and he sees four for twenty. He has no idea right. that that could have easily been seven for a hundred and a touch mm-hmm. or a hundred and thirty and a touch. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. So there's if if the right person has Callaway, it's going to cost you a lot more than you think it would to get him. But if the right person has Callaway and they're like, oh, la da da, I don't know, I just play fantasy football because my friends play, I don't know what I'm doing. Right. Then yeah, go for it. You can, I mean, I think. Grabbing Callaway now is a really good, you know, spot because I think when they go to Oakland this week, I I I think it's game on. Well, he's he's already shown the reason why people have were saying that this guy could have been a first round talent if he wasn't right. a knucklehead off the field because there is you put him in press man. He's beating you. He's got to move to beat you off that. Like, Yo, that you, quick- you can't keep up with him. He's got a nice little cut up off the line. He'll hand swap you out of there, and he's off like that ball that he dropped on the sideline right. that, that he made it. He actually ran a really nice route for it. Troy Aikman alluded to it. He gave his quarterback Some a spot room. to put the ball, and he dropped it, which was a terrible drop. But It was like, like he was trying to field a punt and save it from going in the end zone. He right. caught it and then threw it back in bounds. No, no, I don't like, want this. <laughs> no, Bo, that's a catch. You got to hold on to that on the sideline. Of course, Baker came back and got the first down on that on that play. After right, that. but I think he's, he's displayed everything you want to see from the receiver end of it outside of maybe a couple of drops here or there he's got the speed he's got the talent he's got the wherewithal the route running ability all of those things he can beat any coverage you throw at him he's too fast right 
He's too, he's hit the nose. He's too right. fast, he's, too furious. He's got an aggressive quarterback to throw him the ball now. Right. And you, how, you, how, you what are you going to double Antonio Callaway? I oh, know. Yeah. And like that play where we were talking about it, he didn't even need to hand swipe that guy because the quick twitchedness right, he is got so him. for real, for real that he didn't even have to get touched. He took he a just, couple whoop, of jabs off the line and, and, was and took gone. off. It and was so fast. Couldn't even fast. get his hands on him because the guy had to bail and turn around. And like you said, he, he gave forget, his quarterback room who, on who was the uh, the DB deep back covering. Yeah, him. and and like you said, it was a good was route. It Tremaine he gave Johnson his, was he covering? Him? I don't know if it was Tremaine. I don't remember. Um, but like you said, he was he, eating he, him. He gave he gave his quarterback room on that sideline to make that throw, and he didn't run it too close to the edge. And you, you see him; he's getting behind defenders with, with ease. ease. Yeah. It's just sick. But for as 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 much as you've seen all the flashes, the long touchdowns, he could have had so much more. And that's what I think is is making him affordable right now like on that ball to Tyrod early in the game when Tyrod underthrew him could he have come back to the ball probably he so. could, could he have drawn a pass interference could he have gone up and tried to high point the ball and actually catch it rather than just right. try well let it come there to was him. another deep sure ball in the end zone that. near closer to the end zone he had two deep balls in that game there was another deep ball closer to the end zone that he probably could have that they didn't call pass interference that they thought maybe was pass interference he probably could have gotten pass interference if he would have came back right. to that ball a little harder and that ball was even more off target right. than the first one um and and then he he's he's had some drops and it's like it's awesome for the Browns because he's he's blown up and shown a lot but there's still a bunch of stuff on yeah. tape for them to be like to keep him grounded and to keep yeah. him learning and he's got a good support system like Todd Haley has made Jarvis Landry take him under his wing and then you, on Hard Knocks you saw him like the two of them just watching film together Callaway's got Antonio Brown on the voice chat. And he's got Antonio in his ear talking to him, which I don't know if that's necessarily good or bad, but it, he's got some good influence, I think, around him. And, right. and you know, he he is one more mess up from getting a, a solid suspension. He probably, probably gonna is going to get one looming because he got he got arrested for possession of yeah. marijuana. Well, let's let's just. But they didn't cut him. They right. stuck with him. They right. traded Josh Gordon, and now he's in this role, and he could have exploded even more. You got to let one of your boys be the weed guy. Yeah. Just quit. You stop being the weed guy. Let, let Get a patsy. But you can't have two weed guys. They traded one of them away. Right. <laughs> She's you, not, your own I, mic I think there. I turned my mic off. <laughs> Big Tony, Tony reality himself. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I just gave myself 30 seconds. <laughs> Casey's saying if you're Callaway, you got to let somebody else Right. Take care of your yeah, weed. You, you need your boy to be your weed guy. Right. Yeah, you can't be driving with it. Right. No. Oh. What are you doing? Just let, being let cocky. Follow behind you. Just being yeah. cocky. Being cocky. Going to the same party. Just give it a second. Right. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> anyway, I think that's going to wrap up our our Browns uh, talk of. Well, real quick, Jarvis. I mean, he's been playing. He's been oh, playing Jarvis well. Landry. Who's that? But he's still probably cheaper than he should be maybe he could go acquire jarvis still before it's too late well you're not getting jarvis off of any of my teams i got no him way. on a couple teams and he no is, way man he's unapproachable but i mean you, two things you go buy jarvis if you can same thing if he's just on a guy's team who doesn't understand that now baker's going to throw him the ball well early and, and often or May, I mean, maybe you got Jarvis and you package Jarvis into you add something with Jarvis and try to come away with Michael Thomas or something. But I mean, I, there's no selling Jarvis. No, Gordon, Josh Gordon's out of there. Everything just got and Baker Mayfield's in. Everything just got better for Jarvis. And he already wasn't bad with the two tie rod games. He comes in, has a 20 pointer with Baker. Like there's nothing to not like about what's going on with him. They some smart people like Jacob Rick Road. Um, we're saying that he's going to be Todd Haley's AB, yeah. and it's shaping up that way uh, kind of already. Um, and there, but there is still those people out there who do not like Antonio or uh, who do not like Jarvis Landry, and will spit whatever they can out there to to say that this guy isn't any good at football. And some people listen to those people blindly. So there is probably still some value to be had on Jarvis Landry out there somewhere. Somewhere, exactly. At, at this point, I would say it's probably twenty percent of the Jarvis Landry shares are obtainable for a fair price. I think that most likely. Those people that blindly had Jarvis Landry probably called offers from him sometime in the recent past and maybe sold already, and the, the Sharp right. guys have Jarvis. But most likely, Jarvis Landry is on one of the top three player-type guys in the league. Your time to buy is when he got traded to the Browns. Yes. Yes. So Still not too late, uh, perhaps, Agreed, but, agreed, but 
we don't want to get too caught up in Jarvis. He's Just great. Throwing that out there. If you have an opportunity to buy and you don't think it's outrageous, buy. If you got an opportunity to buy, then shoot us on the five dollar holler. Find us over there at the Patreon and and give us your question about it. Show us your lineup. Tell us what you're working with. Tell us what you think we can get him. And maybe you think you're on the verge of a deal, and the guy just says, "Oh well, I th- it's a good deal, but I'm gonna have to pass." Come over there on Patreon. Shoot us the, the some good details, and we'll walk, we'll figure out how to get him get him on your team for you. All right. Well, speaking of Patreon, we were gonna get into a little buy sell hold here, but we're out of time on this free show. No, Browns, say, Browns say it just ain't ate so. it up. Browns say it ain't ate so. it up. They deserved it. Yeah, they deserved it. It was awesome. Whole show on the Browns. They did deserve it. But that it, what we got the buy sell hold list is awesome this week. The guys that we had to talk about the buy sell hold the first couple weeks have been killing it on YouTube. Everybody's checking that out. So make sure you go over to Patreon and check us out for this buy sell hold. And we we got some Chris Carson, Geronimo Allison, Tyler Boyd, and it keeps going on. Adrian Peterson. I mean, we got some real big time names to talk about over what here. What do you do with all these guys? We're also going to get into some Lions, a little Kenny Galladay, a little uh, Carry On Johnson. Wait, what was that? Carry On Johnson. Oh, yeah. We he got some prime to ready to roll. We got some listener questions we're going to get to. A bunch of trades that, that we do with the listeners of, hey, should I do this? Hey, should I do that? Using us as their buddy system of saying, hey, right. you know, let me bounce this off of you guys. We, we have each other to kind of do that, and this is kind of how we started uh the whole show is like hey you know we we have each other to talk to this all about and we exhaust each other and our wives of talking to each other on the phone so we decided to start a podcast and do it on air and let you guys listen to it so what we're trying to do with the patreon side of things is you know be that set of buddies that you can listen to maybe you don't want to talk to your buddies because they're in the same league with you there you you want some help with it with a trade you send us somebody just sent us their whole roster and said hey should i panic should I be blowing this thing up? Let's talk through it. And we, we talked through it some and we gave him some advice. And when you have trades and you're not sure what to do or you want to make a trade and you're not sure what to do and how to get it done, we're there. We're ready to help you do all that. We'll help you build rosters. We'll help you with anything you need over in, in, in the Patreon world right now. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where we're heading. We're going on YouTube live uh, every once in a while to answer questions for people and singling them out. Um, Casey and I got on the horn last night and discussed uh, a, a listener question and shot them the video. And they got a whole tailored video to answer their question. We go through a lot all the questions that are present for the show on this next ex- exclusive Patreon show. Um, if you guys are, are interested, on Sunday mornings we're doing a live stream to answer sit-start questions. So you go over to YouTube, please hit subscribe. Um, if you want to get notified of any video that we release or of the live stream, you got to hit the little, there's like a little bell button next to the subscribe button. You click that and then that will enable all notifications from us. If you don't click that, it's going to be hit and miss on what YouTube decides to notify you about. But right. if you hit that button, you'll be notified of when we go live, when we post a new video. So these are all just ways for you to get more access to us patreon members have priority so we answer all their start questions first and then we get into that youtube chat and we answered a bunch of people's questions as um, many as time allows as much as time allows we get on there around 11 45 so be looking out for that head over to our website the ffdynasty.com you can get to patreon from there or patreon.com slash the ff dynasty we have some cool forums on our web page um if you're not sure about the five dollar holler just yet you can go get some questions in on the on the forums um and check out our website it's got it's got all of our content there please on any pod pot, platform of your choice Podbean, google play stitch your tune in radio subscribe there please go on to itunes and hit us with that five star review just tap the little five stars it would greatly be appreciated for sure please and thank you till next time you've been listening to the ff dynasties married to the game